please welcome to the Brain Forum, Professor John Donahue. Well, it's a, a great honor to be here. It's a great honor to share the stage with so many distinguished speakers. And uh, thank you for that invitation. I do want to start just briefly by saying that I come to you as a person who was a member of uh, an agitator group uh, put together by the Kavli Foundation and Dr. Byung Chun that initially approached the White House about the US Brain Initiative. And that eventually led to um, the Brain Initiative that I'm going to talk about. And I was a member of the committee that put together the documentation for the NIH and, and set up the goals and strategies for the NIH. So I'm here uh, representing them, but I'm not an official spokesperson for the US government. But they did kindly prov provide me with many of the slides I'll show, so I thank them in advance for that. So the, the question to us now in 2012 was, what, why do we need a US brain initiative? And of course, as, as Patrick already pointed out a few minutes ago, that brain disorders are a major uh, problem, of a health problem, and the, it's the number one source of disability in the U.S. There's more than 100 million U.S. citizens affected, and what's disconcerting is the rates of these diseases, disorders, are increasing. An annual cost of dementia alone is $200 billion, and of course, it's what's really frightening with this neurodegenerative disease is that the cost could be in the order of trillion, trillions of dollars uh, in the future, and that's not only in the U.S., but in Europe and around the world, this is a major health crisis. So we have a really great need to do something about treating brain disorders. The basic message that with all the years of investment uh, in, in neuroscience and moving forward is that we don't know enough about the puzzle of the brain. We don't know how the brain works. We need a lot of basic material to understand it. And it fits into a little mantra that I was carrying around in my head at the time that I think applies very nicely to this, is rules and tools. This is a cycle where the, the rules by which the brain works, by which the brain goes wrong, the disorders occur, are limited not only by you know, having enough people that are well-funded to, to think about brain disorders, but also by the tools that they have not only to investigate the brain, but also to treat these brain disorders. And this is a cycle where improvements in the tools which rely on our friends and colleagues in the physical sciences and engineering to, the, the, to create new rules, which then create new demands on tools. So this was a driving and motivating force for thinking about the US Brain Initiative. So in <clears throat> April of 2013, I was actually fortunate to be president, present at the White House while President Obama said, uh, announced the Brain Project that this is the next great American project. And specifically, he announced that you know, we need to give the neuroscience, give the world the tools they need to paint what he called a dynamic picture of the brain, which he means an understanding of how the brain is working. This uh, really led to an unprecedented uh, uh, activity, set of activities in which federal agencies in the US, there are many federal agencies working together or working on brain initiatives uh, on the brain. The NIH, DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research uh, Program, the National Science Foundation, the FDA, and what's IARPA, a, a recent one that many of you may not have heard about, but is an intelligence advanced uh, uh, research program. And these groups were assigned with coming up with, uh, with programs related to the President's Brain Initiative. And importantly, a number of foundations also joined in in the program early on, and you're going to hear about some of those, particularly the Allen Brain Institute, a little bit later on. So when the, when the need for a plan was uh, really put together, uh, the, the National Institutes of Health put together uh, an advisory committee. It was called the Advisory Committee to the Director Working Group, and it was a collection of prominent scientists, reductionist scientists, clinicians of all types. Uh, and uh, it was, the leadership was uh, actually appointed Bill Newsom, who is a neuroscientist, very distinguished neuroscientist, and Corey Bargman, another distinguished neuroscientist, both of whom were actually skeptical of the whole program and whether a top-down initiative like this made sense. And it was really a brilliant move, I think, from the leadership's part to put in people who were really originally, initially very skeptical about this whole program. And they became phenomenal leaders, driving very uh, important discourse, helping us receive broad input from many people in the scientific community. We worked for about a year and a half and did basically to summarize this report, which is called Brain 2025, 
It said the first five years should be emphasizing technology development, but not exclusively, and the second five years of the program should emphasize discovery science, but not exclusively. And the, the key words of understanding the brain, and I think one of the big revelations uh, that, that emerged from what I see as an era, an era of molecular revolution to turning back to understanding the brain as an entire system. How does it all work together? And so some of the words that popped out was from this whole initiative and this whole discussion was we needed to map the circuits of the brain. We needed to measure its patterns of activity, and we had to know how all of these things interacted together. In other words, understanding the brain as a system. And the tools to do that have emerged over the past years, and we realized that making these tools better and making them work was a way to really get an understanding of the brain. So we came up with seven priorities. These are the seven priorities for the NIH Brain Initiative now. And one was to establish a catalog of the cell types. What kinds of cells? What are the basic working elements of the nervous system? How are they wired together? How are those wiring diagrams all working in this complex network of a brain? How do we uh, link brain and behavior? How do we make understand how brains actually connect to behavior? Uh, what is the theory important that we need to work from not only a, an empirical framework, but actually having theories that guide us? And I see my movie is fading in quickly. So the next area is the, um, for reasons I don't quite understand it, it will appear and it'll make sense. One of the, the next one was human neuroscience, which is something that may or may not be familiar to you, but it means actually not only treating humans and being able to apply things to humans, but also understanding the nervous system by studying humans. And there are many opportunities to study humans. One of them in this movie that you'll see here is a, a woman with Parkinson's disease, and she's treated with a tiny electrode that's placed in a little uh, target structure in her brain. Professor Benabid is going to talk about this wonderful discovery uh, pretty soon. Uh, tomorrow, and what's really exciting about this, this initiative is it's, this uh, particular treatment is it's a medical device, a device that is changing the way the brain is working in ways that we don't fully understand, but it has a remarkable effect. And if we can do this for Parkinson's disease, can we do this for other disorders, dementia, schizophrenia, even loss of memory? And so this has opened up a whole new avenue of thinking in, in humans, how can we treat disorders that are uh, with stimulation that can have dramatic effects like this. And one is, is to learn from the human themselves, the people that have these kinds of devices. So uh, also from this uh, initiative, we uh, put forward seven principles, which I think are very important to present at a forum like this, where we have many people gathered together and think about not only what are our initiatives, but how do we go about the process. And I very much like these, and I'd like to just quickly review them with you. One is to pursue uh, human and animal studies in parallel. That is, the two spheres are very important. They both have to be carried out together. One is not more important than the other. We learn from non-human animal models, and we also learn from the human examples, and they both have to work hand in hand. We need interdisciplinary collaborations, as Patrick and others have pointed out just recent, just in, this, in his opening comments, that Working across discipline from physicists and engineers and clinicians is critical to understanding so something as immensely complicated as the brain. We need to integrate across spatial and temporal scales. That is, the brain works at thousandth of a second levels. It works at second levels. It works at hours and even days and months and years. And we need to be able to understand how functions work across these many levels. We need to disseminate technology. That means this, as all of us make discoveries, we need to make sure this is widely available. Importantly, because we're trying to influence how the human brain operates and make it well, we will be influencing its function and we need to just examine its ethical implications, I think very carefully. And of course, important to all of us who are receiving funds from various government, governmental organizations or from private foundations or philanthropists, we need to be accountable. We have to say that we've used this money prudently to push forward the, the scientific boundaries. So for the US Brain Initiative, the plan was to initially uh, um, invest in technology. You can see in the blue line here, there was a, a bump early on and it plateaus. The green line is the investment in more discovery neuroscience. And the red line is an investment in infrastructure. You can see that grows over the years. Uh, and the US is planning to ramp up to about $500 million a year by 2021 with a total investment by 2025 of $4.5 billion, excuse me, dollars. Now, of course, there's a reality. What a committee of scientists puts forward as the need and what the US government will approve is not always in complete alignment. 
Uh, and uh, so this is just uh, the match of the two. And I'll just point out the first year we received 46 million, which was uh, distributed. The next year, uh, 80 million new dollars was uh, uh, provided, even though 100 million was requested, but that's not bad. And the projection for 16 is about 150 million of the 190 projected. Of course, the U.S. government will change over the next few years, and we're not sure about those commitments. So we, we obviously are using this initiative to show that we need an ongoing uh, base of support. Uh, so, so far in, in 14, as I mentioned, 46 million was distributed. It went to 58 projects and over 115, 100 investigators in 15 states and even three countries, so already an international effort. So just to give you a flavor of some of the things that have been uh, developed or been funded already, I'll just highlight a couple of really interesting ones. One is just to map every cell type based on the way they, they express genes. Uh, are they uniquely genetically uh, identifiable? Uh, look at neurotransmitters, the chemicals in the brain moving around in real time to see how the, the flux of, of those chemicals washing around in the brain. Uh, there was a, a funded program to develop an MRI scanner that's 100, more, 100 times more sensitive than the current ones available, and one a wearable PET scanner, which is an imaging system that is now uh, the size of a small car and uh, could, uh, could be condensed down to something you could wear on your head and we could evaluate brain chemistry and brain function. Another uh, important step forward for the U.S. was to engage all of the brain uh, 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 entities that are working on the brain, the NIH, DARPA, and the FDA. Uh, these organizations have traditionally not been closely in line and not certainly worked together on brain activities, although they're all major funders or approvers of these kinds of activities. And so there's an important initiative now to bring all of them together. They meet regularly. Um, to discuss the things like their interactions and concepts, and, and they communicate with each other. Importantly, the US FDA is listening in a way probably that it hasn't before, and approving especially medical devices is a complex and uh, a very costly endeavor. The US is now having an annual meeting uh, that uh, brings all the investigators together with federal uh, officials, and that will now, as of December, 15th, uh, December 2015, it'll be an annual meeting. The NIH and all the other agencies are now continuing their funding, uh, all of the uh, initiatives that I discussed, uh, putting about 80 million this year, as I said, uh, both in technology and in discovery science. And they've also introduced uh, a series of short courses for educational activities. And if I'm not mistaken, that although it's more difficult for people around the world to get funding from the US government, it is a possibility. Uh, and those kinds of inquiries are encouraged. Another important step is engaging commercial partners, and both small businesses and large businesses are being uh, brought into the fold. Uh, a number of big companies have shown great interest in trying to push forward this, uh, the collaborations with uh, scientists and academia and in the government. Uh, and uh, the, the NIH is, and the other federal agencies are very interested in creating a worldwide collaborative effort. So in the international realm, the U.S., and I, I asked the NIH to provide me with a quote where they are. They put the quote was, we're, we're uh, uh, talking to Australia and Canada about their brain initiatives and collaboration and, uh, and others, they said to me. And of course, I think an example that uh, Henry Marker may uh, uh, talk about a bit is a, a Neurodata Without Borders initiative, which is already a collaboration between the EU and the Human Brain Project. Oh, sorry, and the U.S., I should say. Um, so finally, uh, the report, if you're interested, is available online at the website that you can see. Uh, there's also, you can download the Brain 2025, which is a long document describing everything uh, that uh, I've talked about in more detail. And also, a uh, publication will come out today in Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society, which is a summary report from all of us in that committee uh, describing the highlights of that uh, initiative. So with that, I say thank you very much and uh, thank you for your attention.